And greetings. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Steve Day Show here live and on demand on Blaze TV radio and podcast. I'm Steve Dace alongside. Unfortunately, he's still here. And it's it's not because we don't love him, but because we do. Aaron McIntyre still reported for work this morning alongside you, Todd Erzin, and I think I speak for both of us when when I say we were disappointed to see him here this morning. Yeah, just because joy cometh and, uh, you know, you're ready for it. i am been there, done that. I get it. So, yeah, but it'll, it'll be just as good whenever it happens. It will. Happy birthday, by the way, to my beautiful wife, Bella. Oh, wow. Well, there's see. I'm now, sure the best on. birthday present for her would be another birthday. I was just going to say, would that be something? Mother and child reunion every birthday, huh? <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. So Aaron is still here. We're, we're glad you're here, but we're also not. We're Me really, too. We're really hoping you're not going to be here tomorrow. Feelings mutual. Yeah. <laughs> Take no offense. Uh, our show brought to you by our good friends over at First Cup Coffee Company. They have a flavor for every freedom-loving American. They make great coffee while also doing so, fighting for the same values that you do. All right? And so if you want to check them out today, uh, you can get uh, the roast date on every single bag, and you'll see that they ship it to you within days of being roasted. And you can get 10% off. If you use my last name, Dace, at firstcup.com. Firstcup.com, use the uh, code Dace to get 10% off. And if you end up subscribing, you'll get an additional 10% off for the life of the subscription as well. Firstcup.com, promo code Dace. Also want to remind you, tonight's a big night here on Blaze TV, at least as far as we're concerned. I mean, we, we think it is one of the, maybe the best piece of content our network has produced in, uh, what, five and a half years uh, that uh, we've been uh, a part now of uh, Blaze Media. All right. It's called Bought and Paid For, How Politicians Get Filthy Rich. And I got to tell you, man, this is incredible. The amount of honesty here, even, even by some of the people that are blowing the whistle, even they're like, dude, I'm not. I ain't pure as the clean driven snow here. Which is why I'm blowing the whistle. This is, this is, that's basically George Santos, right? Yeah. He's basically, dude, I'm not tiptoeing between the raindrops up here, right? That's why I'm blowing the whistle on this. It's all BS, okay? If anything, I'm, I'm actually one of the low-level offenders here, all right? I, I'm, I'm a mere henchman in the La Cosa Nostra. Let's go get some capos, maybe get the, a godfather or two or a conciliaire, right? That's kind of what he does. It's exactly what he does. And I mean, number of dollar amounts are specifically itemized. Names are specifically named on both sides, by the way. I mean, this, this is absolutely prophetic work. You do not want to miss it. All right. It's going to debut tonight. Uh, you can head over to the pre-show that starts live uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern tonight with Glenn. Uh, and that's at uh, youtube.com slash at blaze TV to watch that live event. And then subscribers, you can watch it on blaze TV tonight as well. You don't want to miss this. You want to subscribe now. This is, this is beyond content and this is public service kind of stuff. And if you want to subscribe, blaze tv.com slash dace, go there now, uh, and get uh, a subscription at a discount. So you don't miss any of this, uh, and all the other content we do that, as you said, Todd, yesterday, this is the new plumb line now here for the network. Yeah. I mean, this sets an entirely new standard. I think this program does that, that the level of the amount of truth told in this program and proven in this program kind of new, I think raises the bar for all of us. This, this show very much included. Yeah, we keep doing stuff like this. It's going to demand a real insurrection, not like the fake one that supposedly <laughs> happened. YouTube.com slash at Blaze TV. You can watch the pre-show there and then subscribe now uh, at Blaze TV.com slash Dace. So you do not miss tonight's episode bought and paid for. All right. Coming up at the bottom of the hour, we will get to uh, the beginning of buy, sell or hold. We'll get through as many of those as we can. And then what remains, we will cover in the overtime today for Blaze TV subscribers and then next hour, the weekly prophet of woe and lamentation, Daniel Horowitz, will be joining us. We'll talk to him. But let's get it started, as we always do, with Aaron's rundown of what happened while we were away. What happened while we were away?
way, brought to you by Federalism Sucks After All. The Arizona State Supreme Court yesterday ruled in favor of instituting an anti-baby killing law that predates the state of Arizona by nearly 50 years. The 1864 law outlaws baby killing in pretty much every circumstance except for when the life of the mother is at stake. This is great news for now. Of course, pro-baby killing activists have already begun the process of collecting signatures for a state referendum that would make abortion up to 24 weeks a quote-unquote fundamental right. If similar referenda and other states are any indication the Arizona proposal will likely gain enough signatures to qualify for the ballot in November when voters will have the chance to approve it. This is apparently terrible news if you're a Republican squish running for Senate like Trump darling Carrie Lake, who said yesterday she thinks the 1864 law is terrible. Obviously, I think Roe v. Wade should be overturned, and I think the Supreme Court, I have a good feeling that they're going to do the right thing this time. And, and again, what, I'll echo what Steve just said. We have a great law in the books right now. If that happens, uh, we will be a state where we will not be taking the lives of our unborn anymore. Whoops, wrong clip. That was actually from 2022. Carrie Lake said in a statement yesterday, quote, and it is abundantly clear that the pre-statehood law is out of step with Arizonans learning Chinese today. Today's phrase is, Fox News is called Arizona for Joe Biden. In Washington, a group of pro-Hamas orcs, whom you can smell through your TV screen right now, stormed the basement of the Senate yesterday. Meanwhile, up above the Senate basement, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin affirmed the U.S. has no indication Israel is committing so-called genocide in Gaza. Uh, Senator Cotton, I, we don't have any evidence of genocide uh, being uh, created. Uh, so that's a, uh, that's a no. Israel's not committing genocide in Gaza. Uh, we don't have evidence of that, to Thank my you. knowledge. Yeah. Joe Biden is apparently reneging on his administration's previous calls for a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas being contingent on a hostage release. He told Univision yesterday. What I will tell you is I think what he's doing is a mistake. I don't agree with his approach. I think it's outrageous that those four, three vehicles were hit by drones and taken out on a highway where it wasn't like it was along the shore, it wasn't like there was a convoy moving here, et cetera. So I, what I'm calling for is for the Israelis to just call for a ceasefire, allow for the next six, eight weeks total access to all food and medicine going into the country. For the fourth straight month, inflation data has come in above expected forecasts. The consumer price index rose 0.4% in March and 3.5% on an annual basis. Economists had expected 0.3% and 3.4% respectively. Core CPI, which removes the volatile food and energy categories, was up 0.4% from February, topping an expected 0.3%. According to RNC policy researcher Jackie Cotet, which gasoline since Joe Biden took over is up 47.8 percent. Groceries are up 21 percent. Eating out is up 21 percent. Baby food is up 31 percent. Pet food is up 24 percent. Rent is up 21 percent. Electricity is up 28 percent. Natural gas is up 27 percent. Used cars are up 21 percent. Airfare is up 33 percent. Public transportation is up 22 percent. And real average weekly earnings are down by 4 percent. A Florida mother was sentenced Tuesday to a month in prison and three months of home confinement for stealing and selling President Joe Biden's daughter's diary years ago to the group Project Veritas. Amy Harris was sentenced in Manhattan federal court by Judge Laura Taylor Swain, who called the Palm Beach, Florida woman's actions, quote unquote, despicable. Notice this woman isn't being sued for defamation or being accused of lying about the contents of the first daughter's diary, which allegedly includes accounts of her father, Joe Biden, showering with her and questioning whether he actually molested her. In Florida, it's another day that ends in Y. So Ron DeSantis continues to just trip over and find political wins for fun, this time targeting retail theft and porch pirates. So today's bills, uh, the bill I'm going to sign not only cracks down on retail theft, it also cracks down on porch piracy, so that if you order something uh, and they leave it at your front door, you come home from work or you bring your kids home from school, package is going to be there. And if it's not, someone's going to have hell to pay for stealing it. So HB 549 uh, is a great piece of legislation. It is pretty much doing the opposite of what a lot of states like California and New York have done. Uh, it believes that we need to increase penalties on those who are committing these acts. So we will raise penalties 
on people that steal packages from your front porch. They are going to be deterred from doing that with adequate penalties. Uh, we're also increasing penalties for the so-called retail theft rings. So if you have five or more uh, people, uh, you're going to have enhanced penalties as a result of that because this is a coordinated effort that you see in some of these jurisdiction. And finally, Scotty Scheffler is currently the number one golfer in the world ahead of this week's Masters Tournament in Georgia. Scheffler sat down with Sports Spectrum to discuss what truly motivates him and drives him on the course and off. Yeah. Hey, uh... Yeah, I'm a faithful guy. I believe in in, in a creator. Uh, I believe in Jesus. Ultimately, I think that's what defines me the most. Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like I've given a plot, been given a platform to compete and you know show my talent. Um, it's not anything that I did. You know, I think I sat up here a couple of years ago doing the the interview after the 2022 Masters, and it's like, yeah, I was underprepared for what was about to happen. I I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't, um, you know, I was very anxious that morning. I didn't know what to expect. And um, it's hard to describe the feeling, but I think that's what defines me the most is my faith. You know, I believe in one creator and I've been called to come out here, do my best, compete and uh, glorify God. And that's pretty much it. And that's what happened while we were away. Well done. Good and faithful servant. And if you watch golf, and I'm, I'm a guy, I watch it intently four times a year, <laughs> the four Masters, or the four, uh, starting with the Masters, the four majors. Uh, he's a good dude. And he's fun to watch play, too. And that's all the more impressive because you can tell that saying it is awkward for him. Correct. Yes. Not because it's f f for any number of reasons. But he's doing it nonetheless. I have to say this. Mm -hmm. I'm not silver tongued, whatever. It's not polished. I'm it's really, not rehearsed. I'm right. really just a guy, a golfer. But I, I, I'm looking around me, and I feel called. And I have to tell you this. I, and a lot of people always come to Steve and say, "What am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to do?" The best you can, mm -hmm. just like that. Mm -hmm. That's what you're supposed to do. I mean. God anointed a man with a speech impediment to speak exactly. to the most powerful member of royalty that existed on planet Earth at the time on his behalf, right? So uh, very well done there by Scotty Scheffler. Uh, it, now, if you looked at some of the other stuff in Aaron's montage, <laughs> might be a good time to catch up on our friends over at Birch Gold, <laughs> all right? Uh, there is a very common sense reason that it is pushing to all-time highs right now. Actually, there's several reasons. Uh, Aaron mentioned uh, higher than expected inflation. So the cost of goods continues to rise despite inf interest rates controls by the Fed. Since January of 21, in other words, since this regime took over, the cost of living in America has gone up about 18%. That's insane. We Many of us still don't feel it because of the amount of stored up wealth in the country. But if it goes up another 18%, you will. So... Um, especially as the national debt skyrockets to $34 trillion. Just text Steve to 989-898. Get your free info kit on gold and uh, learn why smart, prosperous people have used gold as a means of protecting themselves, their assets, uh, as a hedge against government to debasement schemes like what we're currently doing or managed declines. Uh, get your free info kit now. Text Steve to 989-898. Text Steve to get your free info kit there at 989-898 uh, with, with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau and tens of thousands of happy customers you can trust our friends at Birch Gold. Text Steve to 989-898. Okay. Um, what... What Carrie Lake did yesterday hurt my heart, stung. Two years ago on this show at the time, we had not met her yet, didn't know her yet. We were just watching her emerge and evolve as a candidate. 
And over the course of that six to eight months, we were speaking for myself anyway, I was incredibly impressed. I think I even said at one point late in that campaign, in terms of her ability to message and articulate, she might have been the best candidate maybe I've seen in my time doing this in this business or somewhere, something close to that probably. Um, when I was in the hospital last year, her and her team reached out to me and they were very kind. Um, she was extremely kind to my wife and, and our fellow Iowans when she was here in July. And so I have been, I'm not unaware of her um, escalating uh, trail of abuses and, and disappointments over the last year plus. We've even discussed them a little bit privately amongst ourselves at the time. Why hasn't it become like a focal point of the show been mentioned? Why haven't I talked about it on social media? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to change my standard. Like I didn't come out and say, hey, Carrie Lake lying about Ron DeSantis, uh, making people uh, get the jab and wear masks in Florida is good because, you know, I like her. She's been kind to my family. So, you know, I didn't change my standard, you know, um, but I'm going to be more inclined. I am still a human being. I'm going to be more inclined to give people more rope before I wrap it around their necks if I've established some form of a personal rapport with them. And and in a way, I kind of hope I never lose that. And if I do, it, it's probably time for me to no longer do this, that I'm, I've, I've kind of let it take my humanity away from me. I've had it give me a form of the col I've got culture war PTSD. You know what I'm saying? And I just, I'm like, you know, I, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm culture war hurt locker now. Okay. Where I, I can't, I'm, I'm it, kind of my own spin on the scene where Jeremy runners in the grocery store with his wife and kid and he can't function. So he has to get back and go back to the, it's like, I can't, I can't treat you as a human being. I can't say hi to you. Well, why did you vote that way on HB 20? You see what I'm saying? I can't, I, I've, I've just lost. And at that point I probably do seriously just for my own soul and sanity. I've, I'm, I just can't function as a human anymore and grant people any level of humanity or agency despite differences. And it's probably at that point that I just need to go away. Okay. And that's frankly true of anybody. That's golden rule stuff. Yeah. 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 I mean, you've turned this now, you've turned the, you've turned your, your, cause we can turn anything into idol, idolatry. We talked about turning federalism into an idolatry yesterday, right? You can turn your righteous stances into an idol. If you lose yourself to it, if, if, you can't love, if you can't obey the two most important commandments according to Christ, love the Lord your God, all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, love your neighbor as you love yourself, that all of the law and prophets are summed up in those two statements. If you can't maintain those two things, even while doing a righteous thing, then that righteous thing has become an idol. Fair? Fair. It's a little bit like, is it a righteous thing to see the athletic talent in your children and invest in that and want to see them maximize that which God has bestowed upon them? But if you're that parent sitting there screaming at that every time your kid gets a foul called on them, they never do anything wrong. My kid should play every single time. You, you, if, then you've turned that into an idol. That, that in and of itself is a good thing, but you have turned that into an idol, right? Yes. Or likewise, if you're sitting on your hands while your daughter's out there getting out swam by dudes, you've done the same thing. Exactly. Okay. This is one though, because this is a higher principle than what Carrie Lake thinks about Ron DeSantis or anybody else that I like at the time. And I'm just going to tell you, if you're going to apply a standard to people that they have to, when it comes to inter Nicene fights among tribes and candidates, you know, within political campaigns that you're going to demand everybody tell the unvarnished truth all the time. I'm, I, I, politics probably isn't the field for you. Fair. Yeah. Okay. It's a little bit like if, if, if you got to assume someone's trying to read your signs in baseball, you got to assume somebody's trying to steal your signals in football. That's why we, the, the coaches aren't covering their mouths during the other show goon because they don't think the assistant coaches of the other team aren't with the box trying to read your lips on the screen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we have to account for human nature. And we all have those embellishments and weaknesses of human nature, correct? Mm -hmm. So we have to give some form of mercy where that is concerned. This is beyond the pale. I, I mean, I, it's just beyond the pale to sit there in 2022 and say that exact same law was great and now say in 2024 it was not. 
there is no righteous or moral justification for this. You can save me your emails. If you try, they'll just get ignored. And, and it's not because, you know, um, I'm doing you a favor. Because my reply would shame and embarrass you if you're still capable of being shamed and embarrassed. So I'm going to do you a favor. Some of you will continue. We'll try this. I know. I, I will just delete them. You just don't want to win elections, Steve Dace. I, I will just delete them. This is, at its most basic description, it's immoral. I don't use that term a lot anymore. But, I mean, that's really what it is. And for many, many years, I was involved in, before we started getting smart, or maybe genuine, and started doing things like heartbeat and personhood bills where we were actually begging the question of what is a life and when does life begin? There were many, many arguments that I would get involved in. Okay, if we do these and then you can kill the baby bills, aren't you at least implying that and in some cases it's okay to kill children? So do we want to codify that into law? And then the other side would come back with, well, it already is the law. We're trying to save as many babies as we can. And, and I went, we would go back and forth on this for years, right? Okay. Yes. You heard some of these arguments, you know, and, and I didn't win them all. I, I, I won my share, lost some of my own. You know, I think I, I understand the ethos that both sides is, are beginning from if they're sincere. I, I get it. Okay. This is not that argument. This is flat out. We have a law that protects children. I want it to be done away with so we don't. Now we're not, this is not we're going to save as many as we can. This is we're, we're going to we are now. We're not implying anything explicitly. I want a law that protects children undone. So if we're going to undo a law that protects children, then we're going to let them do what? Harm the children. That's explicit. And if she had a de- she had a D after her name, there is no one right now would be contemplating it composing an embarrassing email to this show that I will not read or discuss on the air because you've humiliated yourself enough just to me one on one. We don't need to share that with the rest of America too. I'm doing you a favor. Mercy triumphs over judgment. No one would be contemplating how to do this right this moment. M- moment would they? I'm existentially certain of, of that. Co- of course they wouldn't. And that's your idol, frankly. The baby's not less dead because the Republican killed it. This is immoral. Now, here's the thing. I, I don't... I, I really don't have any energy to t- talk about the election or poll. I, I don't care right now. I, w- I want to talk about something that I think is far more important. Okay. Far more important than even what I think is still a very important election, even though we are behaving as if it's really not. You know, we mentioned a few minutes ago, there's a new plumb line here that we've established of being honest and forthcoming with what bought and paid for is going to unveil to the American people tonight here on Blaze TV. We did. That's the new standard now. We, and, and our show itself has got to meet that standard, right? Yeah. Let's, let's strive for that, shall we? I like that challenge. All right, I'm going to see if we, I'm going to do my best to meet the challenge of that. This was never a pro-life party. This was a party inhabited by pro-lifers. And, and therefore it felt like it had to condescend to us for votes. I described Roe versus Wade for years as a shibboleth of the damned for Democrats. But that's not sufficient. It turns out it was a shibboleth of the damned for Republicans as well. It also allowed Republicans, by and large, to lie to us for decades. Uh, Now that Roe has been smashed like the pillars to the temple of the fish demon Dagon face down into the dirt, the truth is now being laid bare, and you see that with Carrie Lake. So two years ago when um, I'm running for office and this probably can't really become law and there's really no chance for it, I think it's a great idea. All you dumb idiot uh, pro-lifers vote for me. Two years later, now that it can become law, oh, I think that's a terrible idea. That's immoral. It's flat out immoral. And if you are Carrie Lake's pastor, and I hope she has one, I you need to speak to her. Now that Republicans have a chance to show they are sincerely pro-life and, and act on decades of speeches and promises, they are by and large punting and cowering. 
uh, starting with the guy responsible for overturning Roe itself, ironically. Now plenty of our own teammates. If you're on social media right now, you're assaulted by people claiming they're also Christians and right-wingers and conservatives, uh, but they're fine sacrificing kids on the altar of personal convenience. Uh, Just like the single moms in the Democratic Party, we like to parody and lambaste for their bloodlust. We're perfectly fine doing it over here, too. It's funny. We execute serial killers that we don't do. The the serial killers who killed more people. Do we like the sparky? Do do we run it hotter? Do they get like an extra injection of venom because they killed? they, they, They particularly were gruesome in their killing or killed more. Or do we just lethally inject and 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 uh, electrocute serial killers all the same because i kind of think it's the latter i think it's the latter. yeah it's the latter but there's something way more important than an, uh, this election at stake the election is at stake like divine election is at stake and i want everyone within the sound of my voice to hear what i'm about to say listen very closely this is my attempt to reach the bar. If you think that was it, oh no. No, I, this is my attempt to reach the bar of what bought and paid for will do tonight. Some of the harshest moments in the scriptures come as a result of cultures that embrace the killing of their children. In the Old Testament, the final straw for Israel was when the people went down into the valley of ben Hinnom, violated what Moses told them never to do. They went down into the valley of ben Hinnom, and they threw their babies into the fire to the demon Molech. And that's what caused the diaspora. That was the last straw. Seventy some odd years later, when they were permitted to return, that land was now considered desecrated, and it was turned into the trash dump of Jerusalem. And it was renamed Gehenna. And so if you can imagine ancient world trash, you probably wouldn't want to re- re- eat out of the trash in the modern world, probably. We mock people who are, you know, trash uh, pickers and eaters in the modern world. Imagine the trash of the ancient world before indoor plumbing, before antibiotics. Can you imagine what was in there before tampons? Can you imagine what was in there? And so in order to burn this trash, the fires of Gehenna would rage night and day. They never stopped. They always were raging to burn the trash in the former Valley of ben Hinnon. When the Messiah arrives, Christ, when he is preaching on hell, and he preaches on hell more than any other topic in all of the New Testament, he refers to the word that he uses to both describe and refer to hell is Gehenna. Meaning he is comparing the fires of hell to the fires of the desecrated land where the child sacrifice to the demon Moloch occurred. That is now a refuse for trash where the fires burn and never stop. There's no relief. And the trash keeps coming and the fires keep burning. That same Messiah who lays down his life for his friend says, if you defile one of these children, it is better for you to have a one-ton rock tied around your neck and thrown out into the open sea where you will drown in the most brutal fashion possible than it will be for you on your day of judgment. We are not playing a political game. We're playing a far more dangerous game than that. It is a game we cannot win. It's impossible. We will, we will not mock God. We are deceiving ourselves. And I want to make sure everyone within the sound of my voice has been warned. Because like Scotty Scheffler, I've got an obligation to tell you some things too with the platform that was given to me and the talent that was given to me too. And that is one of them. Enjoy your election. Don't say you weren't warned. Back here on the Steve Day Show, if you're one of those homeowners who is just saying, I've, I've got to get in, I've got to move, I've 
uh, I've got a family situation, or maybe you're thinking, you know what, man, it's a buyer's market out there. So why don't I take advantage of the fact that a lot of people don't want to move given what's happened with interest rates and everything else, whichever situation is you make sure you don't dare enter into the let's go brand and real estate market without a real estate agent you can trust to guide you along the way, which you're going to find at, well, the website says it all, realestateagentsitrust.com. This is a referral network of real estate agents from all over the country, many of them from right here in this audience. So you know that you have uh, at least some form of a common value system. Uh, they're going to be the top sellers in your area. Otherwise, we wouldn't refer them to you. They know the best practices to get you to the outcome of what you and your family are looking for uh, and all the hassle that comes with trying to buy and or sell a home. So make sure to check them out. Realestateagentsitrust.com. That's realestateagentsitrust.com. Um, we actually have some breaking news that in light of what we were just discussing, I, I do think we need to address. Okay. So uh, sorry for calling an audible on you guys when we were just talking about uh, whether we were going to move on during the break. Okay. But in just the last few minutes, um, Donald Trump was asked if Arizona's Supreme Court or if the Arizona law defending life goes too far. Quote, I'm quoting from Donald Trump, quote, yeah, they did. That'll be straightened out. As you know, it's all about states' rights. It'll be straightened out. I'm sure that the governor and everybody else are going back are going to bring it back to within reason. End quote. If it's all about states' rights, why does he care with the Arizona? Is he running for governor of Arizona? Is he running for state legislator? County commissioner? It's states' rights. Arizona passed this. Supreme Court of the state of Arizona upheld it. Isn't Why wouldn't that be states' rights? Do you guys know why that wouldn't be states' rights? As with most arguments made by anybody on either side these days, they're not even trying because it took you two seconds to say it. that's nonsense. It's just complete and total BS. Just complete and total BS. What, what is the reasonable amount of killing, do you think? So he, was, he said he wants to bring it back within reason. What's the reasonable amount? Can, Aaron, do you know, is there a website, oh, I, uh, reasonableamount.com, that Steve, gives us tables and ratios? What, what's a reasonable amount of children to, to dismember and, and uh, tear apart, do you think? I bring you glad tidings of great joy. I bring this entire audience, within the sound of my voice, glad tidings of great joy. Reduced inflation, GDP growth, that is not only marked but sustainable interest rates going back low again so that we can buy and sell houses cars within reason all of that is going to reform the crushed skull of a six seven eight month old baby all of that is going to reattach the limb crushed and torn asunder by the forceps that's going to fix all that so remember what i said on friday there are basically in in this country two types of voters at least that i believe make up 90 95 percent of the electorate electorate those who say lie to me or those who say lie with me mm -hmm. meaning just sell whore yourself out to whatever special interest i represent or lie to me tell me that things aren't really as bad or dire or or apocalyptic as they may seem. I am in the former group, lied to me. I, I would just prefer that he not say anything at all about this issue. I would prefer that Carrie Lake just issue generic statements about what she wants to do, what she wants to, just, hey, it's a culture of life. I think we're better off where life, where life is able to flourish, end of statement. Don't tell me that you really, at your heart, have nothing there. Just don't tell me that. I Don't tell me that. Please. <laughs> I'm at the point where I'm in the just lie to me camp. Because that would be better off. Maybe, maybe, for the short term. I would feel better. I, that's what I'm saying right now. I would feel better if you just, just told me that, you know, we're better off in a culture of life. Instead of telling me, yeah, um... It's reasonable to crush the skulls of unborn babies 
at this point. You know, the point that he's talking about, the only point that I've seen that Donald Trump has articulated is late term abortion. That, that's the standard now. Unless I'm he's, he said, oh, you know, some states will have 15, some, some states will have 12, some states will have 16. The only red line that I've ever seen him articulate is late term abortion. Wow, that's a hell of a standard, guys. Great job. I mean, I'm, I'm not even mad. I think I'm out of anger, honestly. I just think I'm I'm just heart sick about the whole thing. I'm just I'm just not even mad. I'm just I don't have any anger left. I'm just the whole thing. Man. Well, importantly though, the uh, providential timing that often happens on this show you say in the last half hour what is pound for pound in my estimation one of the most important things you've ever said and it's not necessarily the confirmation you want but immediately god grants all of us with ears to hear immediately we are offered that you're exactly right. That's a blessing. We in in these hard times, we've got to pay attention to the signs. And you just got one. Steve told you something that's very, very hard to swallow. And instantaneously the devil screamed. This time using the vision, the vision of visage excuse me not the vision the visage of donald trump and he he uses us all the devil uses us all if we let him to say and do the most horrible horrible things you go back to bill clinton in the 1990s and he violated democrat orthodoxy on virtually every every issue but one what was the one issue that he would not violate democrat orthodoxy on this this abortion he violated it on welfare reform. Dude signed the Defense of Marriage Act into law. Okay. I mean, Bill Clinton violated Democratic Party orthodoxy for the time. Okay. They've got different orth some different ones now that they didn't have 30 years ago. But for the time, he violated every figment of Democrat orthodoxy, except for the abortion one, which indicates what is the one sacrament above to rule them all in the Democratic Party. This, this one? one? This is the one that he knew he couldn't violate. Okay. You couldn't triangulate this one. All right. We are talking about influxes of single women and how much, and ba basically singleness is the number one determination of how you vote. Number one. Singleness is the number one determination in our culture. And single people overwhelmingly vote Democrat. What's the driving issue that is the reason why they do? This one. This one. Okay. Here's where I'm going with this. This is what I mean when I say we are playing a dangerous game. And this is a game that we cannot win. There's only losers. When you, the, the only way to win this game is not to play. The only way to win this game is to repent that you ever tried. So I just established for you that over the last 30 years, there has been one absolute non-negotiable in the Democratic Party. We, you must let us kill our children if we want. Who's in charge right now? Those people are, right? Mm-hmm. I just did a live read. 18% um, higher cost of living than what we had before they took over, right? Yep. Yeah. Mortgage payments are literally over 100, new, mortgage, new mortgages are literally over 100% more in, in monthly payments than they were when these people took over, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See where I'm going all this? Yes. Okay. Border, southern border, totally, completely erased. We have no sovereignty nationally as a people whatsoever gone. I mean, we, we were complaining that, that Trump didn't keep up with his, his, his end of the uh, rhetoric by deporting less people than, than Obama. Trump looks like, the, looks like the wall of China compared to what we're doing right now, right? Do you see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. Okay. When we gave ourselves over to, we thought we could play this game. We are being ruled by people whose number one sacrament is the slaughter and execution of children. Number one.
that is the driving force of their issue politic, that one. They got power, what happened. We're all suffering. There are people we work with, maybe here at The Blaze, maybe others you know, who will go to prison because these people are in power for doing nothing other than praying, for doing or are in prison for doing nothing other than um, I got pissed off about the election results and set Nancy Pelosi's chair, which I paid for, right? Why, 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 why? Do not be deceived. God will not be mocked. We always will reap what we sow. It's not, we have to let go of the abortion issue, Steve, so we can win every other issue. You have it backwards. And this is the same thing the Romneys said. It's the same thing McCain's said. It's the same thing the Bushes said. It's just, it's all the same stuff, all being said by different people. If I had told you what I just read from Donald Trump was a quote from Mitt Romney about some other state in, t- in the 2012 presidential election, would you have believed that? Mm. Yeah. If I told you that was a quote from John McCain in the 2008 presidential election about another state, would you have believed that? Sure. sure. No, it's a quote from the guy that overturned Roe. What's worse, by the way? To overturn the evil and return to it? Or to at least have been on the wrong side of it all along. We're not in charge here. He is. We're ultimately not determining who our rulers are. He is. We have allowed and we, 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 we've wanted, permitted people who are for the killing of children to gain power. For wanting that, we are be, I believe we are being punished comprehensively everywhere else. If you know the history of Old Testament Israel, their idolatries were numerous. Numerous. They were constantly in and out of minor forms of captivity. But what caused them to finally be displaced from the land? I just told you. Uh, sort of, this was capital punishment. Everything else was corporal. What was capital punishment? I cut you off. It was this. It was this. No. It's because we have let go of the sanctity of life that we've lost every other issue. Is a culture that understands life comes from God, therefore one of its primary and ultimate duties is to defend life more or less likely to just print fiat money and not care whatsoever about the natural laws of economics and going into debt. Which do you think it is? More. More. A culture understands that life ultimately is the most important right, because if you don't have a right to life, all your other rights are pretty much moot, as Ronald Reagan once said. Is that that culture more or less likely to decide, well, if we can redefine life, I guess I can redefine things within life, like what's a gender, what's a girl, more or less likely, do you think? More. Yeah, see, we do this with every issue. Uh, If you care about protecting life and you realize as a government that's your ultimate charge, are you more or less likely to let uh, human drug mules, human traffickers, uh, and terrorists overrun your your largest border? More. More. You have inverted it. You're not wise. You're not clever. You're a fool. Because you're not... God. We cannot win this game. And we are now saying what the president, former president, just said is what Carrie Lake just said. Now we're going to let them kill. We're going to let you do it. It's not what well, we saved as many as we could. Now, now there's, a, there's a law today. It is the law in Arizona. You cannot kill your kid. Now we're going to say you can. You can kill your kid. On the authority of 66 books of the Bible. 2,000 years of church teaching, history, and tradition across tens of thousands of denominational and sectarian lines. I ask you, any of you, Any of you within the sound of my voice, anywhere in the nine realms of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, give me one instance 
of God blessing that. Give me one of God not punishing it. You won't find it. I am, I am afraid for my granddaughter of letting these people, my, my, my children who are getting married and leaving the home and having lives. I went out with a daddy-daughter date with my youngest daughter, Zoe, last night. We hadn't done one in about four or five months. It's like she aged 10 years. I, I, are you at that stage now as your kids get, they grow up and you're like, this is like a grown woman in front of me now. And, you know, and last year, she just graduated high school, you know? And I, I'm, I, I am afraid of letting the people in charge continue to make decisions that will deny them access to the things previous generations of Americans got to take for granted. But let me tell you who I'm really afraid of. Not the one who can destroy the body or cause the cost of living to go up 18%, but the one that can do those things and then cast the soul into hell. We're all going to be dead a lot longer than we were ever alive. There is no prophetic significance to this country whatsoever. It matters not in God's grand scheme of things whatsoever at all. We are playing a very dangerous game, and I'm heartsick over it. Because here's the thing, it won't even, it, it wouldn't even win East of Eden anyway. There's no amount of alms to demons you could make. You're right. You've done enough. Keep your conscience. Doesn't work that way. There's no win here. All of these things are making it more likely we're going to lose in November. We are dividing our own base while igniting theirs. That's... That's a terrible strategy. I don't care what the issue is. So there's not even an earthly gain to be had. Don't say we weren't warned. Back here with Hour 2 here on Blaze TV Radio and Podcast. Steve Dace here with Todd Erzin and Aaron McIntyre. And all of you, let us know what you think about what we think via the SteveDace.com inbox. You can email us, Steve, at SteveDace.com. That's D-E-A-C-E. Like us on Facebook, MeWe and Gab. Follow me at Steve Dace Show on Twitter. Get our Instagram and TikTok. If you listen to the podcast version, thank you very much for that. Um, we're not always an easy listen. Today would be one of those days. So uh, thank you guys for enduring alongside of us. If you have yet to do this and wouldn't mind doing so, leave us a five-star review. Make sure to hit subscribe or follow if you're on iTunes. And that way, every time we do a new episode, it will show up in your feed every single time. And this part of the show brought to you by our friends over at Fast Growing Trees. Did you know they are the biggest online nursery in the U.S. with more than 10,000 different kinds of plants and over 2 million happy customers right here in the United States. They've got everything you could possibly want, like uh, fruit trees, palm trees, evergreens, house plants, so much more, and they find the perfect fit for your space. Um, you don't even need to have a yard. Uh, you can even grow like lemon and avocado and, la and, uh, uh, and olive or fig trees inside of your home on top of a wide variety of house plants they have available too. It's, I know it seems daunting with the, with the catalog they have, but Amy and I went through it a couple of months ago. In, I mean, it's very easily laid out. So if there, was, if there was ever a way to make it simple for you to see all the various options, they do it. All right. Um, and it also helps you to avoid, uh, make, you know, if you have a car and you're going to the nursery, track all that dirt in the back, so you don't have to do any of that. They'll deliver it right to your front door. And they've got the best deals online this spring, up to, up to half off on select plants and other deals. And you can get an additional 15% uh, if you're a listener or a viewer of this show uh, by using the promo code DACE at checkout when you go to fastgrowingtrees.com fastgrowingtrees.com use the code DACE at checkout for 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com normally I am uh, you know 
I'm a master compartmentalizer. I can move on pretty quickly. I am struggling to do that today. I will, I will do my best to make buy, sell, or hold as fun as it always is. Okay. But, uh, it, it kind of feels like an awkward transition, but you guys were kind enough to send in so many submissions and we want to honor that you gave us your time and we want to give you our time back. So let's get to it. Um, Buy, sell, or hold. You guys decide what it is you would like us to comment on. Aaron has selected your submissions. We'll get through as many of these as we can. And then the ones that remain, we will do in the overtime today for Blaze TV subscribers at blazetv.com slash dace. And I mean, I I don't even know what to do to... If, if you use a hold, you got to go back and listen to the last hour again, I guess. I, I don't even know what to say. I mean, do you have a... No, nope. feel like I'm being we're being punished enough at the moment. Agreed. Okay, right. Leave so it there. let's just move on. We will begin with this from Steve Johnson. Uh, Todd forgot to set his feet before this segment began. <laughs> nice. nice, very nice. See, beautiful. That's a reference to a women's college basketball game. Yeah. Oh, it's a reference to so much more than but that. It, so much yeah, more. Yes, but that's the that's the MacGuffin for it, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I saw on ESPN, you had ESPN on as we were start getting ready to start the show. Yeah, they I thought were still there was like the par three, the par three masters thing yeah. or whatever that's called. Yeah. Uh, well, the show before that started, they were still arguing about that call. Nice. Which is exactly what I said in the immediate aftermath. So you got instant confirmation. I was right about all of it and about you. You're welcome. Next, I understand... Both of you have gotten a number of these requests. This is from Nate. Will Todd set up an interview between Steve and Professor Werner uh, before the 2028 election? So Professor Werner's the guy, the quantitative easing guy. Buy, sell, or hold? Buy. At, at this point, I'm impressed with this guy. What, what's his name again? Nate. Nate. Yeah, because he's in my DMs. This guy is relentless, and I, I feel like we need yes. to reward that. So it's going to happen. Todd, make Just, it so. Th- th- that's that's fine. In f- in fairness, and I I know many of you people may, for various reasons, w- w- want to think otherwise. Th- a lot of people want to be on this show, a lot, and so it's a long line, and it's. Got many rhymes or reasons based based on shifting sands and things like that of who gets on when. None of it is personal. It's just how it is. But um, if you're the you, you manage to d- click on one of the boxes that manages to get you pushed up to the front of the line, you apparently you managed to poke Steve in the side <laughs> as much enough times. That it happened. You you broke me. Congratulations. In different ways than uh, Carrie Lake has broken me, but you broke me. Yes. Next, Alex Pfeiffer Pfeiffer says the um, that R.C. Sproul was the best modern day theologian. Uh, He only discovered him a couple of years ago when uh, an 11 year old daughter suggested listening to his lectures on iTunes. We homeschool. I now cannot get enough of his and others lectures at Ligonier. Uh, Very gifted. In fact, I was just. <clears throat> Pardon me. I was just listening to some R.C. Sproul. I hadn't listened to one of his podcasts in a, in a year or two, so I was just listening to a little of that, little bit of that over the weekend, getting uh, ready for more of our Roman stuff, and uh, just having him go back and forth. Um, very, I mean, he's got his own bias, but he was very intellectually honest about the differences and stuff uh, between Catholics and Protestants that emerged and came out of the Reformation. So, I, you know. With the uh, with you pulling Scott Hahn in from the bullpen, man, I kind of I started thinking I better. This guy kind of knows our playbook, so this is, this is what it felt like when you found out Michigan was scouting your games. <laughs> right? So I'm like, this guy kind of knows our playbook a little bit, so I'm not going to get away with a kind of turn a phrase, uh, or any op- any uh, attempt to uh, wink and nod. He's going to know where all the bodies are buried on our side of this, so I had to, you know get some more reinforcement so i was listening to some rc um he's a phenomenal teacher not his method of in communication style not for everybody but a phenomenal teacher was passed away um 
And but dude, if you've got an eleven year old daughter recommending R. C. Sproul to you, I mean, I don't. I mean, I mean, you and your wifey are next level. You guys are doing it right. I mean, well, my eleven year old daughter said I should listen. To her. I mean, that's <laughs> that is extremely impressive. Well done. Bruce Jenner's uterus has this due to the dwindling, in air quotes, uh, GOP numbers in Congress. Hakeem Jeffries will be the Speaker of the House by the end of the summer. They're safeguarding a 269 to 269 result. I got a few submissions like this this week. I, I think it's, an, well, he, he unofficial, um, he, you know what? I'm going to sell. You know why? why? Why would Democrats want to take on that added level of liability that they don't currently they don't currently shoulder that. They're getting virtually everything they want, right? Yeah. They're getting virtually everything they want, and right, and, and in an election year, they get to share that liability with Republicans. By having Hakeem Jeffries officially take over, because he's basically speaker now. You guys got to like uh, Daniel Horowitz just sent me a clip of uh, Mike Johnson out there talking about spiritual warfare in the country. How do you like them apples? How do you like that? Next, next we're going to have uh, Mike Pence on how to raise your testosterone level. What do you think? How's that working for you? This freaking this freaking party, man. Unbelievable this party is. Just a scum of hive and villainy. Just disgusting. Yep. What was the damn question? I don't even remember now. What was Neither it? Neither do I. What was it? Oh, Hakeem Jeffries. No. I'm going to sell it would be dumb for Democrats to take on all of it cuz the American attention spans what? 5 minutes right now, right? Unless we're talking about a moving screen in a women's basketball yes. game that oh, it goes man. on for weeks. Yes. All right, but on stuff of real existential import, it's like five minutes, right? Okay. So if the Democrats don't want to do that. They're getting everything they want. And, and, they, and, and now Republicans have no message. Republicans have, have, all their, have their hand, fingerprints on every murder weapon right now. They're, they're the ones actually signing and writing all of the checks right now. You know, like maybe like a day or two before the election, just as a troll, okay? But substantively before that, it would be a loss leader for the Dems. They, they're, they're in a perfect spot. They're getting all the policies they want, and Republicans are shielding them from accountability for those exact same policies. Put them officially in charge where they've got total control of government, and now you let the Republican Party do about the only thing it knows how to do anymore. And we're not even sure it knows how to do that, okay? Which is run on Democrats bad. That's why I thought we we're going to see a red wave in 2022. I don't even know it can do that anymore. But I, I know it's at least still better at that than governing, okay? So it would be a dumb move for Democrats to do that. I'll sell. What he said. Next, we go to Jackson Pickett Burnside. The conviction and 15-year prison sentences in the Michigan v. Crumbly manslaughter case is a dark precedent. I make no claims about their fitness as parents, but make no mistake, this will be used as a new form of lawfare against normie Americans. Are you familiar with this case? So the Crumbly parents are the ones who uh, bought their, I think, son a, a rifle for a Christmas gift. He used it just days later to, um, to carry out a mass shooting at his school. Uh, I believe the details of this case are that a jury found that they ignored obvious signs. I don't know what obvious are in this case. Obvious signs that their son was mentally disturbed and they should have locked up their firearms. And that's why they're being charged or um, convicted, I believe, on manslaughter charges. Yeah, I will buy, I'll but buy. I, I, I will buy, but I don't like it. We, the, we, we should live in a culture where it is possible to, to walk and chew gum at the same time. It is possible to hold parents accountable. I mean, think back to the, the two young men that committed Columbine. I mean, are we, are we still pulling firearms out of those kids' bedrooms 25 years later? Do you remember that? They were just like, oh, they had this, they had this. I mean, mm -hmm. do your job as a parent, man, okay? So I, on some, we should be able to do both. We should be able Agreed. to say, hey, you are, re hey, you, you, it, let's, take out, let's take away the, the fight over the Second Amendment. You buy your kid a car, give him the keys, and then you think it'd be cool to, you know, let him drink before he's of age, right. and you give him a couple beers, and he hops in the car. Don't think that parent should be accountable for that? Because I do. In theory, Absolutely possibly, do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, that's when we have an actual social compact. And so we understand we are punishing individual 
actions of sin and crime and not making broad statements that we can then use against the people that we hate later on, right? You already answered this last hour. Correct. We like to kill kids a lot, so we can't get anything mm-hmm. right on this. Correct. But since the social compact is broken, I will buy this. But we okay. should be in a, in, if we were in any form of a righteous culture, we should be totally fine punishing parents who did not keep an eye on their children. We punish them if they abuse their children, yeah. right? This yeah. is another form of abuse, a neglect. You yes. don't see the signs. Okay. Now, since the social compact is broken, is that how, is that going to, is that, is this decision going to be limited to that? Of course not. Of course not. But that again puts us in this terrible position where we don't even want to do the stuff that a government is supposed to do, that a court system is supposed to do, because we just don't trust what the real motivations are for why it is doing it in any situation. That's not a long-term prognosis for a culture, by the way, guys. Okay, this isn't going on like this for 30 more years. It's not. It just won't. It's not sustainable. One worldview will just ultimately crush the other one or, you know, the sulfur will fall. Those are the only two and, and or revival. I mean, which is another form of one worldview will crush the other one. Those are really your only options here. This idea we're just going to sit here pontificating these things, you know, around the campfire while calling each other names and having the worst suspicions of one another just forever because the money's so good. Nope. It's not how this is going to end. I promise. Agreed. Sam Jones says abortion will be the issue that finally breaks the Republican Party. It appears that's a buy, which, you know, is ironic because it was the moral crisis of the era, slavery, that created the Republican Party. The Republican Party was created in Jackson, Michigan in the 1850s by people who broke away. We we weren't a two-party system then. We had two dominant parties, the party that would go on to become the Democratic Party. It wasn't quite that yet, but that's the party it would go on to become. Uh, And then the Whig Party. All right. There, there were many others, but those were the two dominant. They just weren't as dominant as what we have today. OK. And so these were people that broke away from those other parties, especially the Whig Party, because in the end, the Whig Party just decided mammon is better. Free, free labor, cheap labor to f- fulfill our manifest destiny. Uh, you want America to be strong economically and powerful, don't you? Does any of these arguments mm-hmm. sound familiar? You don't want to just blow up the whole country on one issue. Any, any of this sound familiar? History yes. doesn't just repeat it rhymes. And so these guys got together, the abolitionists did, and Jackson, Michigan in the 1850s, and they formed a new party called the Republican Party. And it says right in its charter that it would that it was to to fight the twin barbarisms of slavery uh, and bigamy. It's right there in the charter of the party. Because this was being debated in several of the frontier colonies. We were also having a debate about whether to let Utah into the country or not. Uh, and so you still had bigamy deeply in, in, uh, embedded in the culture in Utah because of religious uh, influence at that time. Okay, I mean, the Republican Party was, was created uh, as an abolitionist party. That's why it was created. It realized there is no compromise with this. It has to be eradicated. So these things have a tendency to come full circle, just like you see great cathedrals in Europe become mosques, right? Just like you see uh, former Christian universities uh, like Baylor um, become whitewashed tombs, you know, it's almost like we have an enemy that looks to go out and and desecrate and defecate upon things that were once holy and righteous to make to prove his point. It's weird. Probably coincidence. Weird how that just keeps kind of happening. But yeah, probably just a coincidence. Next up is Johnson Tucker. In the spirit of fighting fire with fire, pro-lifers should be pushing to change the language of what we use to define the killing of a person or the murder of a person to aborting. No more murderers use aborters, not killing, aborting. At this point, I don't know what to do. I, I Okay, I'll, I'll just buy because I appreciate that you're trying. I, I got to tell you, this is not, I'm not in a place right now where I can even, I'm just, I'm sick in the heart. I just am about the whole thing. I'm just sure. Okay. Bye. (sighs) Mocking evil says we're finally finding out that Christless conservatism has always been our biggest issue. No principles. The only goal has been to beat Democrats, regardless of if we ever advance our causes. This is why nothing changes. Even when Republican team wins. Yeah. Bye. I don't think that's the sole issue because ultimately the people are the problem. Ultimately, the people are the problem. But it is one of our primary manifestations of the people being the problem, so I'll buy. 
Next up, we got a data or difference maker who says American families will be feeling relief financially within the next 12 months. Well, uh, I think I think we're going to be pumping all kinds of sunshine. I mean, we I've been predicting this since January. This is what is we're on our second or third student loan forgiveness now since the Supreme Court said he couldn't do it. He's just going to do it anyway. Okay. I mean, you know what? Contemplate this for just a second. The Supreme Court told the President of the United States that he doesn't have the power to do student loan forgiveness. And he has done it multiple times since they told him this anyway. Meanwhile, the, the guy we want to be president is arguing that Arizona needs to not protect kids and grant people the right to murder children in order to be within, quote, his own words, within reason, end quote. I, I think some of you think I enjoy this. Do I enjoy this? Be, be brutally honest with this audience. Not that we aren't always, but in this case, I'm giving you permission, even in quiet confidences. Has there ever been a moment, Todd, you've worked with me for, since 2015, even privately, that I, that I've, I've, I've confided, I, you know, I really enjoy battling my own audience. I just, I get off on it. I, I can't tell you how much I like it. No. Hate it. Genuinely hate it. I, I, it's not what I got into this to do, man. I, I, I got into this to stop the baby killers, not to watch the people I'm trying to help say we need to kill more babies. I, I, I don't, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. I, I, well, I know what some of you want me to do. I can't. And you're going to get mad at me and you're going to take it personal. There's even part of my ego and everything that looks at it, that wants to give you what you want. I can't. My life was not, it was not my own. I was bought at a high price. I don't have permission to give you what you want. And to do so would put my own eternal soul in peril. I can't do what you're asking me to do. I understand what that means. That means there may have to one day be someone else doing this show from noon to two that is willing to give you what you want. I'm totally okay with that. You guys okay with that too? That's how it is. Yeah. It's, it's not how we would like this to end, but ultimately every job you get hired to get fired from it. Every, nobody works anywhere forever. We all die, right? So you're either going to die, get fired, or retire, or quit. You know, no jobs eternal. So I, 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 I don't want to. I, I don't want to do this. But I, I, I'm not, just, I'm not the one who said it's. We need to be within reason and kill more kids. Trump is. Yeah. I'm not the one who said we need to repeal the law in Arizona that protects children. Carrie Lake is. I'm not the one that said that. I'm not advocating that. I'm trying to win. But I, I just think, you, some of you think we can win by disobeying God. <laughs> You're not the first generation that has thought that. All those previous generations are rethinking that position and decision as we speak. Can I add this addendum as well? I, I think any, anybody who would be turned off to us um, by virtue of how we talk about one Donald Trump, if Jeb Bush had won the 2016 election, do you think he would have made pretty much the same? I could see him pretty much picking the same, same SCOTUS nominees, can't yeah, you? Oh, absolutely. I can. That's why we're okay. st that's why we're stunned that these people actually overturned Roe. Yeah. yeah. So if Jeb Bush, if we're if we're talking about this, Jeb Bush could have done the same things, and Donald Trump is not on the scene. The different a different breed of people would be saying the same thing that Donald Trump is I, saying. I right agree. Now. I agree. Nothing's changed. The, the disappointment changed. is that a lot of you have believed, and we have to varying degrees, and I have as much as personally I disdain him, have believed that Donald Trump truly is different. The disappointment here is the crop of people that he has attracted to join whatever movement that is, and he himself are now proving that they're not different. That's where the disappointment comes from for me. And I hope for, for a lot of you as well. Agreed. I'm not mad. I'm not angry. I'm just, I'm heart sick. It doesn't have to do, we don't, it doesn't. Yeah, I, I, I've talked about this before. My favorite scene in Joshua, where the charismaniacs up on the stage with the earpiece pretending to do all these charismatic gifts that he really doesn't have. 
And it's all a farce. And Joshua walks in and heals the blind girl and then he looks at the guy. He's not screaming at him, angry at him. Just looks at him and says, you don't, you don't have to do it like this. And man, the first time I saw that scene, guys, it just, I, I sobbed, it broke me. It, we, we don't have to do it like this. We don't. We don't. We're, we're choosing to. We are, we are, we're not even drafted into this game. We are volunteering to play a game, to dance with the devil and play a game we can't win. We can't. No one can. God will not be mocked. We always will reap what we sow. God always gets his way. He is God. We are not. This cannot possibly win. And that's why I'm just heartsick over the whole thing. It's vile. It's disgusting. I'm just... I'm heartbroken. Next, driver of the Jordan Love fan bus has this. In the spirit of Aid Mubarak ending today, we are not having a blessed Aid Mubarak. No, I was hoping for a blessed Aid Mubarak. In fact, you know what? Actually, I think we are having a very blessed Aid Mubarak. Uh, there, if, you catch my, when, if you're picking up what I'm letting down, uh, this is the most blessed Aid Mubarak in the history of these damned United States, frankly. Okay. Steve will speak at CPAC before wishing Ted Cruz a happy Aid Mubarak. A blessed my Aid Mubarak. <sighs> Sell. Yeah, I sell. Yeah. I could see my, I could see, as much as I love Ted, I could see myself doing that just in sarcasm. But I like the attempt to bring back that uh, trope. I like it. Uh, pro li- pro-life means no exceptions. You need to change your, your username there. Pro-life means no exceptions. Uh, reasonable amounts of baby killing. It's probably going to be a more accurate name, but I digress. Uh, it has a top five 1990s Western okay. movies. Okay. <laughs> Number five, City Slickers. Great movie. Is, is that, that a Western? Have you ever seen that? I've it, never seen it's that. It's a Western comedy. It's a great yeah, movie. It is. Number four, Back to the Future Part Three. Is that a Western? Yeah, it takes place in the old okay. West. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, That's City, Sli- City frankly, Slickers. Frankly, City Slickers is the better movie, but yeah. okay. Number three, Tombstone. I mean, of course. No, oh, come on. I'm your Huckleberry. You bet. Yeah. Number two, Dances with Wolves. I mean, I won an Academy so, Award, so yes. okay. Number one, Unforgiven. I think Unforgiven's one of the greatest westerns ever. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I, Young Guns or Young Guns too. I love Young Guns. Yeah. Love Young Guns. Kind of the Lost Boys of westerns, you know, with the uh, Brad Pack, and you got the classic John Bon Jovi, Blaze of Glory for Get Young Guns too. Yeah, but that's a pretty good list. I'll buy. You bet. That's not bad. All right, next up we go to I Have Questions. The most crucial part of front yard lightsaber fights is setting your feet before you strike. <laughs> Thank you. I, I got to tell you, I didn't think I was capable of laughing, but you, even in my current state, you made me laugh with that. You're, I mean, that, that, that's, that's a... The level uh, of crazy yes. you are driving people to right now because... That's a touch them all. Like, I, I think you hit every single one yeah. of Todd's love languages with that. Yes. You get me. Rolling 20 is next. Top Todd, five. Todd, you free Friday night? <laughs> Might be now. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, top five family that, games. Hey, that's, that's at Miralago now, too. Right? We're, we're, that, that's good, too. We're, you know. So you don't see Melania Trump for nine yeah. months, and then she suddenly shows up to do a, a Rainbow Jihad event there. So go ahead. You guys, you guys need to connect off of the air. We'd be happy to facilitate that for you. That's fair game now, too, apparently. Top five family games that at any time could end in divorce. Number five, Monopoly. Number four, oh, Pictionary. <laughs> number three, Dutch Blitz. Number two, Scrabble. And number one, Boggle. I don't know what Dutch Boggle Blitz is. Boggle can be contentious. I don't know if it's divorce-inducing. First of all, Monopoly is, has to be number one. Has to be. Trivial Pursuit's got to be on the list, too, particularly if you're playing with somebody obnoxious like me. Um that can just get on your nerves with the just minutia they know. Okay. <laughs> I love that footnote. If you play Trivial Pursuit with me, you should divorce me. <laughs> yes, pretty much. Uh, but Monopoly has to be number one on the list. I mean, Monopoly has has ended dynasties. Okay. So, uh, I'm just... This is one... Th- I love, you know, family time, but this is one, like, 
I will do them under certain circumstances, but like board game time, this is this is not my jam at all. So I just yeah. Calling an audible here. I saw this this morning. Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn by Seller Hold. So why do we need another Joker movie? I walked out of the theater. The in that, first one made a billion dollars, and I walked out of the theater actor. in that movie, and I'm like, okay. It's pretty good, really depressing, well made. Said some things. I never want to watch that movie again. Yeah, I have not. I, it, it's it's an incredible film, and like, but like you, I've not been able to bring myself to see it again because it's 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 a very nihilistic and accurate depiction of where we are currently at. As a, I mean, the line at the end where he looks at Robert De Niro before he shoots him in cold blood and says, because he's asking him, why are you doing all this stuff? Why are you doing all this anarchy? Is you trying to make a political statement? I don't believe in anything. I mean, that, 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 that sent shivers down my spine the first time I saw that, which is still the only time I've seen it. I can't, I've not been able to bring myself to see the movie again. I'll buy. She's a very talented performer, and um, I think we're underselling her as an actress. I'll sell because I think she herself is clearly a nihilist on some well, level. Would, and, well, she's in the right and genre so of film. Is all of, I think we, we really need to strongly start considering like pulling ourselves back from the product that Hollywood is pre- producing. It's, it, it, it's as sick and a reason for the sickness as everything we've been talking about on this show so far. All right, coming up in the overtime bonus buy, sell, or hold, we're going to be spending some time talking about polls. Oh, gosh. No, I was just about to say, I'm, I'm, I'll try to be in a better mood for that one. No, polls. Like P-O-L-E-S? Yeah. Or like the Polish people? Yeah. And other ki- kinds of polls. Okay. I, I know what you're talking about, and it's genius. I'm not sure I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, you should, the, I should you like be? it. Okay. You will. It's refreshing. What a day to have the prophet of woe and lamentation on and view him as relief. That's coming next. here on the steve day show brought to you by our friends over at patriot mobile luckily there is at least one industry where the parallel economy is fully developed and available and it's with one tool that we pretty much all need to use uh, these days in modern america that's our mobile phones now you don't have to give your money directly to people who hate you anymore and you'll get outstanding customer service from a team that's based in the u.s what does that mean it doesn't just mean they're from here it means you can actually understand them when they talk that's important apparently We have forgotten that in the world of customer service. It's really important for the customer to be able to understand you. So you get an an outstanding customer service team. You get an outstanding product. They customize it for you. You can switch your phone, upgrade your phone if you make the switch today. Keep your number, switch your number if you make the switch today. Whichever you prefer, they will make it happen for you. And if you use my name, Steve, as your offer code, you'll get a free activation if you make the switch today at patriotmobile.com slash Steve. That's patriotmobile.com slash slash Steve. Use the offer code Steve for a free activation at patriotmobile.com slash Steve. And let's now bring in the weekly profit of woe and lamentation. Although I have to tell you, I've, I have delivered quite a bit of woe and lamentation myself here in the first hour of this program. So I don't even want to contemplate what <laughs> happens adding Daniel uh, and his particular zest to the proceedings. But good to see you, my friend. How are you? I'm doing all right, Steve. You haven't done it yet in Arabic. So, you know, you haven't gone down to the final level. We still have Abe Mubarak, and I'm um, looking forward to the feast later today. All right. I, I, I want to ask you about what you just sarcastically alluded to. But before I do, let's, let's get to something that, well, even this, I don't know that it would be proactively positive for people because we don't have any body outside of the state of Florida that would act on it. Okay, but, you know, um, one of the number one nations of Islam, Saudi Arabia, just gave us some data on the covid jab. You wrote about it since the last time we had you on. Can you can you share what what Saudi Arabia found? Well, there's all sorts of ways to do an abortion nowadays, and you can do it at any any stage of life. Um, So essentially what the study shows is that the covid shots were an abortion. Um, 
27% of 804 people that they randomly surveyed uh, who said that they got the shot in Saudi Arabia, uh, immunologists in two major hospitals, uh, they answered – uh, you know, a bunch of questions on a survey, a lot of different demographic information, health status, that they had heart complications after the shot. Um, the majority of them were within a month. So, you know, very much correlating with the time of it. And it was all verified, meaning it's not just that they said, you yeah, know, I just I just don't feel right. It was 218 out of 804 of them. They all went to the hospital. OK, so they were all hospitalized. Twenty seven percent were hospitalized um, with heart ailments. More than half of those uh, entered some sort of critical care unit and uh, more than half were there for at least four days. And the majority of them took 12 months or more uh, to to resolve uh, the, the symptoms of treatment, um, including those who, that were never resolved. So it's it's one more study in a long line of studies that demonstrates that the heart damage is ubiquitous. It's longer. It's more severe than they're admitting. Now, the one thing about the number, which seems shockingly high, is that for whatever reason, they do note that a lot of these people had diabetes and obesity and they had comorbidities. But here's the thing, Steve. We were told that the people who needed the shot the most were the people who are the most vulnerable to bioweapon A mm -hmm. in the form of the virus were people you know who had diabetes and were obese. So those are the people that we shoved the most jabs on. So the only way to throw out a con confounder and say, well, it's not quite 27% in the normal population is to say, well, it's only at a 27% rate of heart damage among people who have diabetes and hypertension. Well, those were the people we gave the, the most shots to. So, you know, when you see died suddenly everywhere, this is yet another data point. But but again, Steve, we don't need to come on to Saudi Arabia. OK, we have, as you noted many times, the V-Safe program mm -hmm. where we now have several hundred thousand uh, text messages released in two tranches. Uh, two different months, and they're both remarkably consistent that people were putting out SOSs to CDC, I can't breathe, I'm having seizure, I'm having heart palpitations, I'm having tinnitus, all the things that the macro epidemiological data, the academic studies, the case studies all hone in on. Um, but, but alas, it doesn't matter. We could have a study coming out that 100 percent of people who got it will die within 10 years. Nothing will change politically. So are you telling me let, beyond our own? I mean, the West is at this point. You're, you're watching the unraveling, the, the divine judgment, I think, of the West, frankly. And we would be included in that. But, you know, since it is, of course, a blessed Ayid Mubarak, you know, neither one of us are necessarily fans of uh, Islam as a religion or an ideology. But, you know. I mean, even a broken clock is right twice a day. They at least still take some form of law and order seriously in Islamic countries. I mean, you can still get your hand cut off in Jordan, you know, for theft, for example. So I would presume upon seeing this data in a place like Saudi Arabia, the Wahhabist schools went to the Saad house and said, all right, man, uh, stonings begin with whom and what time, right? I, I, they're going to act on this data and someone will be held accountable for it, at least in Saudi Arabia. Uh, details when you worship Satan Satan uh, has a way of succeeding with his agenda and I think that's why you're seeing them uh, the the merging we have two major poles but they're not really poles because they they often merge we have the rainbow jihad and the Islamic jihad I mean that those are the two tents okay you're either in it or you're not um, there's no other tent that I'm seeing around and they seem to be merging on a lot of issues. Uh, we certainly see that with the, the queers for Palestine that now ropes in a good number of uh, right-leaning talk show hosts as well. So I don't know. I, I don't think I, I would count on that. It seems like we can never have nice things. You, you, know, you know what's funny? For all the Sharia we now have, I mean, we have never seen Islam at such a pinnacle of power in the United States as they do now. They have a tremendous amount of power. You're seeing it on the streets, but you're also seeing it with their influence in the Biden administration and moving him more and more towards the jihadists. It's funny how I, I, I've never really the last 20 years, you know, as their numbers have grown, 
I haven't really been able to work with them on some policy issues, you know, like with, with the Bruce Jenner stuff. It's kind of interesting. Hmm. Somehow, when you don't have forces of good sacrificing for their beliefs, you suffer the lowest common denominator mm -hmm. of everyone's demonic belief. And that's kind of where we are now in the West. What, what's happening with some commentators on the right and Israel confounds me. Um, it, and it's not their criticism of Israel. I mean, you have been a weekly contributor on this show for many years. And throughout 2020 and 2021, yeah. I was very harsh on Israel. I thought Netanyahu had arguably, when you consider the freedom of the country, the, maybe the worst lockdown in the world is what Netanyahu imposed. His successor, Naftali Bennett, who's still, I, I believe he's still the only religiously observant Jew to be prime minister of Israel, I believe. Um, he essentially turned that country into a, um, a mass experiment on behalf of Pfizer. I mean, I, I didn't, I was very critical of those policies during that time. I understand it's a, a country that has very high abortion and homosexuality rates and it's very pagan. So I, you know, because of the advent of dispensationalism in the Christian church, I think a lot of people think that th there's always been this uh, camaraderie between Christians and Jews. Not really. It's, re it's, a, it's a relatively recent phenomenon since the advent of dispensationalism. If you, from the, you know, from 70 AD until the mid 19th century, the relationship between Christians and Jews in mass was a pretty complicated one, frankly, uh, throughout that history. So I understand from my side's understanding as a Christian, historically, Israel's not, that Israel's not a prophetic. I understand why there are people on my side who believes things about how much we should prophetically align with Israel as opposed to people who believe a different theology. I get all of that. To me, that doesn't even enter into this conversation. We're dealing with Islamists who have proven they will gut you and they will gut me just whether it's October 7th or September 11th. Just the same. This is this is not even in dispute. Like I, I don't I don't I don't need to be a complete devotee of premillennial dispensationalist Christian eschatology to know history that these folks have the, the amount of our people on both sides of this of this whether we're brothers stepbrothers or cousins okay whatever we view our relationship being they have killed a lot of people within this family okay the idea that we're now going to side with them at least tacitly after their most one of their most savage barbaric acts in modern times that is the part that i don't understand and i'm and i'm trying to avoid going right to the anti-semitism card because i hate immediately if i disagree someone disagrees we must all be racist I, 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 i'm trying to come up with another rational reason why we're like rooting against them against the, the very same ideology and worldview that would do this to us and have if they could. The first war this country ever fought was against the Barbary Coast pirates, Islamists, who were hijacking our people on the open seas. And when Thomas Jefferson asked him, why are you doing this? They literally told him, well, Muhammad told us we should do that to you infidels. Why in the world? I, I don't understand this. Th there's a reason why the Palestinian cause is the glue that binds every left-wing geopolitical cause. I mean, and you've seen it, open borders, global warming, queers for this. It is it, it, it is the armpit of all evil um, because, you know, you talk a lot about savagery this week and, and, and abortionists. These are people that worship murder. Okay, it's not just incidental, you know, to, to achieve a certain... Um, you know, a certain strategic means, they worship martyrdom. They worship killing. Okay, I mean, th there is th – the, the people that ha live, that occupy parts of Judea, Samaria, these individuals are the most savage of the jihadists around the world. So that's why the pagans admire them. So, you know, your presentations, it's worse than that because it would be one thing if we'd be safe from it here. Hey, screw them. Let Israel deal with it there. Uh, but they're not letting them deal with it. I mean, they're siding, you know, something that rhymes with Tucker is siding with Biden, but he won't admit it. Um, we have these guys here. I mean, this is what all these imams, the Ibn Mubarak dudes are, are, are saying. 
dude, they're going to gut all of us together. Yeah. Uh, it's it just, it, again, you know, something that rhymes with Tucker is very into, I'm here to save Western civilization, Charlemagne, yeah. I mean, nothing says that like joining with the Muslim Brotherhood and promoting this weenie like Gaza civilian bullcrap. It's just so bizarre. But what, what, what see, even created I, I, what what even created the Holy Roman Empire, Western civil when the Muslims invaded the West? What yes. what are we even doing here? What like, what are we even doing here? But I'll tell you what we're doing. This same way we're based and traditionalist, and then you turn around and we're having, you know, monkeypox uh, sessions in Mar-a-Lago. We're bringing in, you know, log cabins as the top fundraising event. I, I mean, this is you can't view it in a vacuum. And I think the the Israel stuff, and and, and it's not even it's not a, again it's not Israel. It's about siding with Islam. Is a Rosetta Stone to what we're seeing on abortion. It's stupid is as stupid does. You can't fight evil with stupid. And when you have an utter mindless, I don't even want to call it populism because it's not, just mindless noise, just utter noise. Um, but the Democrats, but, 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 oh, I grab a policy in pursuit of a talking point rather than grabbing a talking point in pursuit of a fixed principled policy you'll land anywhere so you know oh we're sick of this cucky republican party that's so you know socially liberal and then we're gonna do bruce jenner like 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 nobody else did oh we're sick of these republicans that pander to win elections oh you need to be an abortionist to win oh we need to get the black vote so we're gonna let out more criminals than obama did it's part of a broader thing you know you can't view the abortion drift in a vacuum it's part of you know let the states decide, Steve. But then December 2022, let's celebrate at Mar-a-Lago, have a big, uh, you know, freak fest celebrating Biden signing legislation mandating gay marriage on red states. See what I mean? It's I need a talking point. And for some of them, there's one or two people who happen to be Jewish that along with thousands of other leaders agreed with the vaccines, agreed with Ukraine including the man himself, right? You know, Ben Shapiro is not promoting Ukraine now, by the way. Donald Trump is getting Johnson to support this Lend-Lease program. It's funny, I thought that was Tucker's number one issue, and that's where he would sort of have influence. I mean, Ben Shapiro doesn't hold much influence on policy. <laughs> I think Trump's a little bit more relevant, um, but they're MIA. This is what happens when it's just mindless. It's Jerobium and Rehobium. OK, that's a it's, reference. Yeah. It's no, I, I'm just deviating from David and Solomon. We're sick of that stuff. So we're going to yep. have golden calves in the northern kingdom. And let me tell you something, Steve, just to cap this off. I know you're out of time. The northern kingdom, when you're the reactionary force that serves as a controlled opposition, that you can never strive for something better within the system. They never had a righteous king ever. After that, whereas with Judea, it kind of went back and forth. You had, a, um, you know, Hezekiah, uh, Josiah, a couple others. It went back and forth a little bit. Uh, this, in many respects, is headed to a darker place than the old kind of Bush Republicans. The last few days is exactly has put that fear in me for the first time. Thank you, Daniel. Yep. I think. <laughs> uh, brought to you by our friends at Jace Medical. Uh, just like it was back during the pandemic, uh, today we're facing drug medical supply shortages here in the U.S. As of March, there were more than 200 drug shortages here. And it's looking like it could get a whole lot worse before it gets better. Uh, that's why you want to make sure you go to our friends at Jace Medical. It's not just now to make sure that the next time we have a so-called emergency, they don't try to take things away from you that are proven and effective that might actually help you. Um, it's to even make sure that even without an emergency, you can still get the medications that you want. Uh, you can get any of their, uh, in the Jace case, you get all five of their venerable antibiotics uh, like amoxicillin, doxycycline, and more. And now you can expand it and customize it to what your needs are, or especially to uh, the, the needs of a loved one. If you've got someone on a fixed income that you're looking after and you're like, I'm not sure I can trust government health care, you can't. So make sure they've got the backup medications they need to. Go to jacemedical.com to get the Jace case at J-A-S-E, J-A-S-E for jacemedical.com, jacemedical.com, J-A-S-E. Use the promo code DACE at checkout for a discount. Promo code DACE at checkout for a discount at jacemedical.com. Got about 30 seconds. 
before you head to overtime and finish off buy sell or hold anybody want to throw a thought in uh the last three days have been tough but let's not regret them they've been clarifying we i think we have eyes to see that we didn't have before collectively that's a good thing the days are evil get busy living or get busy dying romans 828